Hi everyone, welcome back. I think we've got some good updates for you this time. I've been making some good progress and uh, as usual, not giving you enough updates. So Carol did her usual, hey, time for an update. So here we are. I'm gonna show you a little picture Carol will probably add here. We woke up to just a really surprisingly different sunrise this morning. It looked exactly like the Japanese flag from World War II. I've only ever seen a sunrise like that in paintings. So it was, it was really, really interesting. We'll share that with you. So what have I been working on? Uh, actually, we've been working on together uh, is the fuselage and now all of the control surfaces. So managed to get all the glass in, including the windshield, side windows, and the doors uh, to a semi-final stage right now. The windows were all glued in with Cicaflex and then uh, lots of use of, uh, you know, the black plastic electrical tape to protect the glass while fill and sand constantly. I think this is on the sixth or eighth rendition of coating. So it's a matter of continually putting on some filler. And for that, I'll use maybe glass bubbles with some West Systems epoxies. I also use the Superflight two-part epoxy uh, filler. You wanna use stuff that doesn't shrink, okay? And I know everybody's wondering what we're gonna do because these things crack over time. Haven't decided yet. I think what I might do once we're done is maybe very carefully put a small ditch, I would call it in there, and then perhaps use some seam sealer or something flexible. Still giving that some thought. Anyway, it's coming out rather nicely. And so you got a, a pretty good blend here of the cabin top to the aluminum fuselage. So got all the rivets hidden there. Uh, and then come around here, you can see the doors. These are a lot of work, but the gap is looking fairly consistent now. And then this, <laughs> for those of you who've done a 10, you know, I think there's 10 layers of fiberglass in there and then probably another six layers of epoxy with filler, glass bubbles, uh, and then the super flight. So this is a lot of work. It's nice to have it on the rotator uh, so I can just kind of move it instead of standing on a stool all the time. It's easy to just push like this and then sand across the top. So it should make painting nicer too once I figure out how to make this work in a paint booth. So then once we get that done, and it's not quite finished yet, but you know, it's a matter of sanding and then putting on some filler, which requires 24 hours to dry before you can sand. So at this stage, it helps to have multiple things going on. So to that end, I'm finally working on all the control surfaces, managed to get in the carbon fiber wing tips by Sky Design. So those are really nice. Uh, they save some weight, but they really fit much better than the typical ones that come from Vans. And again, I've blended these in. I know you can just rivet and then leave them, but I like them blended in here and they paint and it, then, then it looks like a solid piece once the paint goes on it. Here's some of the stuff I've been using just to show you the West Systems epoxy. You mix it with uh, glass microspheres, bubbles, etc. It makes a really nice lightweight filler and it's fairly easily sandable. I've been using this uh, palm sander from Ryobi and a lot of hand sanding back and forth with some blocks so we get a nice straight line. And uh, here's the super fill. You know, you can get this stuff online or at uh, uh, Aircraft Spruce as well. This stuff is really light. And, and the nice thing about it is neither of these shrink over time. So you don't have to worry about getting some cracks underneath your paint. Uh, and so then well, the next step in preparing the aluminum for paint is I go over everything with the scotch Bright 7447. So you can see this one I managed to get finished yesterday. It's all nice and dull. You can get rid of all the imperfections, small scratches that get on there from construction, uh, whatever the case might be. And then the next step there will be some primer. I've been using the Eastwood Direct to Metal Epoxy Primer. It's really hard. I think I've shared that with you in the past. We did the whole inside of the, you know, various control surfaces and fuselage and the inside of the wings. It's a gray epoxy primer. You can actually see it here uh, inside the wing tip right here. So uh, I'll put that on and then may need some high build primer on the uh, carbon fiber tips and where they mate. We'll see what that looks like. If I do, I'll probably use something like Evercoat 2K Primer. It's nice and hard, it doesn't shrink. And then we'll sand that down, probably get everything sanded down to uh, maybe 600 grit, and then scotch sprite again, and then begin the paint process, which uh, we're gonna use Imran again. So I'll be using Corlar Primer, 
and over top of the uh, direct metal primer and then some Imran paint. I think we're using AF5000 maybe this time or 7000. Or 500, uh, I don't remember. Yeah, maybe it's AF500. I think you're right. One of the other things I'll share with you here is uh, this sanding. <laughs> you know, it's very easy when we're doing, we think about all the loud noises when we're riveting and we tend to grab headsets and earplugs all the time. What I notice is the sanding initially doesn't seem real loud, but when you're doing it for six to eight hours a day, it starts to wear on you. And, uh, you know, I've been actually doubling up on hearing protection using the uh, uh, Fit Ear uh, silicone inserts that are custom molded to your ear, and then actually putting another pair of some old headsets I use when I'm using the weed eater. Ironically enough, Carol mentioned she was going to order a pair of headsets for her while she mows the lawn. And uh, I noticed when she was unboxing it at lunch, it was a Pro Air uh, headset, and it said 25 decibels of noise reduction. Hmm, that got my attention. Uh, the nice thing, though, is it's got Bluetooth. So sure enough, I tried these, and she didn't get them back. She has to actually order another set for herself now. But, uh, you know, it's nice. It's not only much quieter when I'm standing, I can listen to music, and it's super clear. So uh, this process that I hate, is actually become a little more enjoyable thanks to Carol taking a look at some newer technology out there. So again, it's pro here. She'll probably put a picture. I'm not here to promote a product. Just want to let some of you guys know, you know, when we're younger and invincible, our hearing, we didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. I know I worked the flight line in the Air Force and at this stage of life, I've got tinnitus, probably like a lot of the older people out there. Um, so maybe too little, too late, but it is, does make it a little more enjoyable. I wouldn't I would tell you to maybe consider doing this. Uh, matter of fact, I just submitted a column for Av Brief. Some of you have probably seen the new magazine that's kind of taken the place of kit planes out there, and they've asked me to write for them. So I actually did write a whole column and submit it on safety in the shop. And uh, the hearing stuff is in that column too. Hopefully you'll see that this week on Av Brief or soon, I'm sure. Anyway, I don't know if I can think about any more updates. Want to get through this process. Uh, we're actually in the process of ordering our uh, inflatable paint booth. I think uh, So Inflay is the... Uh, so Infla. So Infla is the brand name. And we're ordering a fairly decent size one, 28 uh, feet, which gives us about 23 feet of working space. So uh, the fuselage should fit in there very well. We'll get you a picture of that once we get it and get it set up. Anyway, thanks for listening. I want to tell everybody have a happy and safe Thanksgiving and uh, take care.